Hey, welcome back Design Squad and in this actual Noob to Master series video I'm gonna follow up with one of the ideas I had mentioned before which is to give you almost like a checklist like 10 tips of how to use your test your actual prototypes and what to keep in mind and by no means this is gonna be anything groundbreaking or new but it's something to keep in mind or maybe get inspiration and you know on that note it's almost like you can apply these principles to any user testing when it comes to qualitative usability testing with let's say one-to-one -one scenarios you know most of these are just really the preparation for the actual session then you when it comes to facing the users and evaluating your prototypes tip number one is to always plan and plan ahead and by that i mean you know the typical usability session might last 45 minutes to an hour sometimes only 30 minutes and so your prototype has to encapsulate all of the tasks you want to validate during that time what i see lots of beginners make the biggest mistake is that they either take up too much of a prototype too, too big of a journey or they t take up too small and then try to nitpick and almost users then try to look for the things which they would not necessarily pick up otherwise and so you know things which are which weren't the big usability issue becomes a big issue because you just have too much time and then they just tell subjective bits like oh i don't like this color but i always recommend to prepare for that time frame and prepare extra questions just in case you are under the time frame maybe you want to use that extra time to do the interview maybe you know you finish off in 20 minutes because it was good enough and then you jump into a new feature exploration maybe you just ask them questions which are not really usability oriented but more of an exploratory testing into the next phase and tip number two is follow up from a previous point which is basically you know everything you user test with your actual prototype or any other prototype you have to have a hypothesis in mind and you have to have some sort of goal in mind for the users to go through and achieve it and so you need to prepare a task list or you need to prepare a question which would make for the user the most sense without guiding them to actually what has to be done in the interface and so an example could be that your hypothesis is that hey if you have these three different slides three different pages for user signups users would go through these steps they would click on that button they would succeed and they would come out with some sort of goal of having an account right and so their goal is to create an account and then you would ask your users to hey how would you go about by creating an account keeping it very open-ended just giving them an ability to explore and so preparing task lists accordingly you know you have the time frames in mind you have your prototype in mind and then you jump in and try to cover that and capture everything what we say and tip number three basically before your user testing you need to publish your prototype you know Axure share provides you with a cloud ability to just have a unique link where your prototype is going to reside and so it's just if you click up a button you can publish it immediately password protected if you do this you then need to capture the link you need to capture a password and if your prototype has a login page for example the good idea is to print out the username the password so you can give it to the user instead of telling them what it is because that's just gonna save off time and believe me if your username is not just username at mail.com and password is password there's gonna be clutter and there's gonna be misunderstandings which take up time and so the preparation of publishing it preparing all the details or the admin bits like descriptions links things of that nature is your responsibility and it's a good tip to always assure that it's on time now the next step is almost like a follow-up is you need to decide if your testing is in-house or remotely now some people prefer it remotely because it's cheaper generally I prefer in-house or face-to-face -face. i can capture more usability issues and i can actually read their faces better and their tone better it really depends on your limitations and your organization and your t user types as well because let's say if you user test on someone who is across the globe and your user base in asia but you're based in europe remotely is probably the way to do it because it would be too costly to just go and run a study there but the point here for this tip is that once you know exactly if you're going to use your test in-house 
or in person or remotely, your preparation for those two things are going to be very different. I usually recommend from a previous point where you publish it to Axure Share, you capture the link, you capture passwords, things of that nature, to only send those details during the interview, meaning the first few minutes, maybe you have an assistant or your teammate who actually sends out the details and asks people to look into an email, or perhaps you just provide that link on their laptop or on your laptop just in time. Because if the users have an access beforehand, chances are they're going to look at it or at least have a glimpse so they know and they can anchor their opinions too much because we don't know the tasks or goals yet. And that can skew the facts and skew the findings. And number five is a bit more technical, a bit more, more tool oriented rather than process. But Axure itself doesn't have the video capturing features or audio capturing features. It's really about production and observation, which you can cover with Axure. So my point is to always pair the Axure with additional tools. It's the cheapest tool you could use QuickTime to capture audio or video on a screen. Uh, more expensive options like Camtasia, which I used to record this session right now, which captures my face as well as I'm doing what on a screen is another tool to do. So uh, there is also tools like let's say look back, which is cloud based web based tool, which you can use on a phone as well as desktop. There is so many different tools, you know, from user testing perspective, where you just you can Google and pair it, but you need something to capture the video and the face and the audio and whatever people actually talk to using your actual prototypes, because you can use this as evidence, you can play back the key points of what people say, you can make like almost like a reel of different findings and different themes and play it back to your stakeholders saying, this is why this doesn't work, or this is why we need to change direction. This is why the scope should increase or decrease or change or pivot or whatever, but you need evidence and evidence is always captured. One caveat is don't forget to capture the consent from the users, meaning print out the form additionally, which says that they're okay for this specific project, for these specific reasons, for you to capture audio, video, and so forth. Because at any point, your users can say that they want to pull out if they don't like what you're doing and what you're capturing, and then everything is lost. But if you capture the consent, at least you have the right to use their input, their feedback as evidence for your stakeholders and internal purposes only. Now, next tip is very technical, but basically once you publish your prototype and let me just show you really quickly, depending on how you designed your prototype, it might be responsive, but sometimes you're going to have spaces. It might just come out with that and you see, you can see that it was designed to be centered, but if also with which is quite minimal and it doesn't fill in the space. So I always ask people to readjust their monitors. Let's see if you're running it on a user's machine or even remotely, just ask them to resize the window to the most natural case. So something like this and just center it. In that case, lifelike prototype, which actually is really good for is actually going to look lifelike because it's obviously in a browser, it doesn't have any bugs, so to speak. And people don't have to be distracted by something which just looks very scrappy. And so I always recommend to do that always adjust the browser, some laptops, let's say Windows laptops have a tablet mode, which displays everything very small. So you might want to also zoom in accordingly, but to try to simulate the natural scenario of how the users would look like and do these type of interventions only if needed. Now, next one is a perfect segue from our previous points. And it's number seven, it's test the prototype yourself and give your teammates to test it as well. It could be that you give it to, let's say, product managers, developers, other designers, researchers, you name it. The point here is to familiarize it because sometimes, let's say, when I run a usability study with a lot of different users, some people facilitate other observes. We tend to split the, you know, the responsibilities across the table because anyone can wear a facilitator hat, anyone can wear an observer hat, user researcher hat per se, as long as we know what we're doing and what we're after. And so they need to familiarize themselves with the prototype and know it much better 
than the end user. And this is critical because, you know, some bits here in this, let's say, prototype are not going to work. I, only I know that if I click name, it's going to be sorted by name. If I click on filters, it's going to be sorted by filters, but it's limited functionality. Let's say if I click on settings, nothing happened. And now imagine if, if your facilitator says, how would you update this specific entry? If a user clicks on settings, awkward silence, the facilitator has to be like, oh, um, hey, this doesn't work yet or something along those lines. But if you are ready to do that, they could even ask immediately, what would you imagine happen if you click settings? If it's that next exploratory setting instead of usability testing of this specific layout. And so it's always good to test it yourself so you know what you can anticipate and what sort of questions to prepare for your hypothesis and the task list, which you want to align all the findings on board. Now, next one is again a segue from a previous one, but number eight is just simply don't panic. Now, Axure is an amazing tool and it gives you that ability to simulate lifelike interfaces and digital products. Things are always gonna go wrong because your users they don't know what's going on, or maybe they've been involved in the previous studies or they've been informed of what you're after. They are just given a goal and are looking at this interface potentially first time in their lives. And so, you know, they might click on different things which you, for example, never designed for. You should just keep the open mind in that case because you can't really do much. You should always keep an open mind and prepare as much as you can, but also face the reality that some things just can't be prepared. And then you need to improvise. And for improvisation, let's say, as I said before, if a user clicks on something which is not clickable, or maybe your prototype glitches because you packed so many variables and dynamic panels in it, well, you can always just say, hey, uh, this is non-functional prototype. This is smoke and mirrors. We just want to capture your insights and how you feel about it. And so you can simply reload it and say, let's do it again. And just, you know, it's going to skew the results a little bit. The users are going to be more anchored to certain bits. They might be a bit more biased right now, you know, because we saw it before. However, it doesn't really matter. You need to make the best you can of it and you need to improvise. Now, next tip is number nine, which is basically who does what. And I've seen a lot of designers who want to user test their own prototypes because they crafted those high fidelity bits. They know it inside out. But going back to my point where you need to invite other people, you need to share responsibilities because it's physically impossible to user test on multiple subjects multiple tasks, multiple goals, and then keep track of it. And also you are so exposed to your own biases that you might lose track or think that whatever you saw as a common theme is actually the fact you always need extra insight from people who come from different backgrounds and different and have different perceptional skills because everyone is like that. So you need to share responsibility. But my point here with this tip is that everyone can share their searcher, observer, facilitator hats. You know, the points which you definitely need to cover and prepare a factual prototyping is that you have at least one person who is facilitating and then you have someone who's observing. It doesn't matter if you do it in a lab scenario or in-house or at person's place or remotely. The more people you have on board to observe, the better. And it could be that your product team or technical team is actually just listening in on a single account and just taking notes, you know, or behind this glass screen. It's totally fine. But just be open minded to invite other people and include them because you're as a designer going to benefit from it the most. On top of that, a, a bit controversial, but it's always good to capture at least one metric. For example, working with GDS governmental digital services here in London in UK, I noticed that they capture first time success rates and then everything around those edges, which are, you know, a bit more subjective or qualitative. But first time success rate, let's say, is their metric. And it's not a good idea to mix up, let's say, qualitative and quantitative, but it's good to indicate at least, you know, if those traffic lights, green, yellow or red, how big of a usability disaster it is. And so you always need to consider to add frameworks like, let's say, even Nielsen Norman's uh, pure score, which is amazing to count those first time success rates and visually indicate exactly how your interface 
or digital service performed and so add those different bits you know i get this question asked a lot because there is a lot of confusion of how many people you need to test and you know by nielsen norman group standards it has to be three to five people per task let's say per goal per specific snippet of a journey for that specific user group. Let's say if you have three personas or maybe even more, if your service is so complex, you might want to consider to splitting them into different groups, filling in for each group, let's say three to five people, and then testing the usability issues on that bit. You would potentially cover all the gaps you would have because statistically speaking, that's where the most issues would come out based on the Nielsen Norman standards. And so I always recommend to just have at least a few people per user group per task to usability test and it could be that you know all i'm testing here and i have maybe two different personas for hr managers for a specific user interface i can just have maybe three of each of those different subject areas and just testing this task list asking them to add a new employee and seeing exactly what issues come out and it's simple as that it's just taking them from a to z fulfilling their goal accomplishing it seeing if it matches their needs if the wish list also is answered which is amazing if they are delighted by experience it's up to you how you take it but these are my top 10 tips for usability testing actual prototypes when it comes to high fidelity or low fidelity usability testing but you know you always have to keep in mind of these things and prepare for them and again preparation is key if you have if you take just one tip is over prepare and spend extra time doing all those nitty bits like sorting the links passwords pairing with the right type of tools testing it on yourself and so forth i hope it inspires you or gives you new ideas or just reaffirms of what you're doing is good enough leave a comment down below share it with the community give a like to this video subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so it's new year new opportunities and more videos to come and so on that note i'll see you next time